Sometimes a vulnerable, vulnerable person will be the person that is not the center of attention, but still the center of attention. Sometimes they're the ones like moving the levers in the background or sitting in the corner and so you have to go over and feel sorry for them, but in reality, they just want that attention. Sometimes, like think of it this way, you could have like a friend who constantly complains about their problems, but never asks about anybody else's problems, never talks about anybody else's feelings, never engages with anyone else, but it's all about them. Did you know that there's different types of narcissism? Now, a lot of times we talk about narcissism just as a whole, and we're just like, oh yeah, that person, that's the rude person, that's the crazy person, that's the jerk in the room. Like, we'll talk about these different types of narcissism, and we'll just view it as just being like one type, okay? But if maybe you've wondered if someone that you know has a particular type of narcissism or looks a certain way, and maybe you want to learn more about particular types. So we're going to talk about that today. Now, in this video, we're not going to go over every single type out there. Okay, by the time this video has been recorded, there's types and then there's subtypes and there's partial subtypes of subtypes, like there's all different types of pieces. And there's unfortunately, there's not a consistency. Okay, in the DSM-5, there's just narcissistic personality disorder. That's it. Okay, other people have come up with different types and even their research and their conclusions aren't always uh, consistent in the names that they use or in the types. Okay, so one person might say there's four types, another person might say there's eight types. So just giving you a perspective. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to help you grow, change, and develop. Like the goal is to be able to help you understand what narcissism looks like, what it seems like, all these different pieces so that you can start getting free from toxicity and get to the place where you can develop into being a thriver. Not just a survivor and definitely not a victim, but moving you through the path to be able to help your growth, to be able to help your development moving forward. You can reach out, go to rawmotivation.com. would love to talk to you there. You can access our challenge at claritychallenge.net to be able to see how you take back your power, how you gain clarity and certainty in and out of the abusive situation. Well, when we talk about narcissism, there's it's a complex personality disorder, and it comes in various different forms. There's a lot of different pieces. Now, some of the things that we'll talk about with the characteristics of different types of narcissism, it's not you only fit in one bucket. And there's aspects of my own personality that fits in grandiose and then also fits in covert. Like there's a couple different pieces to it. Sometimes you'll see narcissists that'll flip flop back and forth. Sometimes you'll see narcissists that grow from one to the other. There's lots of different pieces of it. Okay. I'm only going to talk about three slash four like main types of narcissism. Okay. The first one is an easy one for everybody to acknowledge and see. And that is the grandiose narcissism or overt narcissist. Now, when we're talking about the grandiose or overt narcissist, we're talking about the person that typically you can spot. Like typically this person is someone that you can look at, be like, that person is the asshole in the room. Like that person thinks that they're the best person ever. They just like walk through the room and they feel and they look and they act like the room needs to bow down and worship them. Now, oftentimes you'll see this with the grandiose narcissist as them being the, not just the life of the party, but the one that still thinks no matter what, that the party controls, like goes around them, like the center of the universe, like the world revolves around me, that kind of an aspect. Now with this aspect, a lot of times you'll see rage, you'll see some very intenseness come out of the, the relationship or the interaction. Sometimes you'll see at the place where they're only talking about themselves, where they're very much consumed with themselves. They're discounting your feelings. They're pushing you aside. These sometimes are going to be the ones that are going to rage out in public, that are going to get upset and not care as much about their image to other people. Now, there's many different ways that this can come out. There's only not like one specific, specific aspect, but they're dealing with this inflated sense of self, entitlement, and oftentimes they're going to do whatever they can to be able to get attention, admiration from other people. And you can tell that like it is like well known. Like a huge part about an over is this aspect of being extremely arrogant. Okay, this was me in the workplace environment. I was extremely arrogant. I knew everything. No one else had a clue about how to be able to run the business, how to be able to fix an iPad, how to be able to work on one particular project. Like nobody had a clue. Like my idea was always better than everybody else. Like that was like the thought process. Like the world revolved around me. So like if you had another idea, it was probably stupid. If you had another idea, it wasn't going to match up to my idea, so therefore you just shouldn't talk. Like there was a huge aspect of just steamrolling over other people, of just saying, I'm going to do what I'm going to do no matter what you think. And so I had to do this and be huge, a huge jerk in the, in the workplace. 
okay? Didn't really care about other people, like, show up for work. Do your job. You're sick? I'm sorry. Show up for work. Or, like, you're sick? Like, who cares? I'll find someone else. Like, there was this aspect of no care. Very much arrogant. A lot of times you see grandiose excel in the workplace environment because of like how driven they are just to succeed. But the problem is they normally leave a strew of broken relationships behind them. Like like just out there of like this isn't actually helping another person grow, change, and develop. This person is just running over the other person. They don't really care about me. They're just running over me. Okay. Um, it, it, just a simple example just in my life is, is always being right. Like I expected other people to just follow my lead. So like in the workplace environment, if I knew I wasn't right, then I'd have to change my opinion really quick and be like, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was thinking anyways. Or I'd have to get to the place where I wanted to push my agenda. Like this is what I wanted. So then I had to be able to make sure I just did it. Hey, this is what we're doing. I don't really like that. I don't really care. Like there, there's this aspect of not caring. Now a piece of it, I started to realize just in the workplace environment doesn't always work. It's not always effective, especially when you're leading teams, especially when you're leading other people. So instead of just always being that steamroller that would run over people and not really care, I had to start changing some of my perspective. This brought out the aspect of covert or sometimes known as vulnerable narcissism. Now, coverts oftentimes are a little bit different in the aspect that they're not overt, they're not over the top. And you're not like, oh, that's the toxic person. But instead, a lot of times they can appear a little bit more shy or sometimes interviewed. But a lot of times they have a sense of superiority still over other people. Like it's still there, whether it's over or whether it's covert. It's still there. It's just hidden in different ways. So for me, it wasn't just the aspect of taking an idea and steamrolling over someone else and being like, hey, I'm going to do this. Then it was more the aspect of like, I have this idea. Let me figure out how I can implant it in everybody else. I have this idea that's against another person's idea. Let me go talk to people individually. Man, can you believe his idea? It's so stupid. This idea, I've got this idea, and all of a sudden I'm starting to gather these like troops, like gather these like people that are going to listen and obey me versus actually showing up in a true way of saying like, hey, here's the two opinions. This is my idea. If you don't like it, that's totally fine. But instead I had to be right. But I couldn't look like the asshole in in doing that. I had to be able to hide it. I had to be able to put it down. Now, with, with covert as well, you normally see this aspect of being the victim. This is a huge one that you'll see. You'll see it in all different types of narcissism, but a lot of times you'll see it more frequently in the aspect of covert narcissism. Okay, for me, I was always the victim. Every single person in my life left me. Now, the reason why they left me was because of me, but I had to switch that in my head so that it wasn't my fault. It had to be someone else. It, like It had to be their fault. I didn't want to deal with the shame. I didn't want to deal with the guilt that it actually could be me. But it said it had to be. It had to be someone else. Narcissists hate to be able to take accountability for their own actions. A lot of times a covert is going to switch it around and try to make sure that they are the ones that are the victim. They are the ones getting abused. Okay? Even though they're the ones that caused it. Now, the other side of covert is also vulnerable. Sometimes these names are almost interchangeable. Okay, with vulnerable, like they're still talking about the same type of person. Sometimes their abilities seem more insecure. They seem to have less self-esteem. Like there's like pieces there of that like humbleness and shy that you'll see. But a lot of times the entitlement is still there. Like the entitlement is still underneath the surface, but it's more like moving in the background. It's more of like hiding. These are the ones that are going to engage even more so in like the very subtle, like emotional manipulative behavior to be able to gain sympathy from other people and to be able to get validation. Sometimes a vulnerable vulnerable person will be the person that is not the center of attention, but still the center of attention. Sometimes they're the ones like moving the levers in the background or sitting in the corner and so you have to go over and feel sorry for them, but in reality, they just want that attention. Sometimes, like think of it this way, you could have like a friend who constantly complains about their problems, but never asks about anybody else's problems never talks about anybody else's feelings, never engages with anyone else, but it's all about them, okay? With that, it's a little bit more over, but it's this idea of like, I'm a victim. Like, I'm the person that's over here, okay? Uh, then, then the last one I'll be able to talk about really quick is malignant, okay? Malignant narcissism. If you haven't heard about this, it's a very, very toxic combination of grandiose overt narcissism and a lot of times antisocial, okay? Sociopath. 
Okay, a lot of times it's combining the two of those and you get this like crazy outputting of malignant narcissism. And with this, it normally brings in some of the antisocial personality disorder traits that end up affecting the the, the interaction extremely. Uh, think of it think of it this way: a lot of times you'll have uh, sociopath narcissism like mix and end up being more of a sadistic streak. Like I want to be able to see your pain, I enjoy that pain, uh, I enjoy causing harm, I enjoy causing the chaos. Like the malignant sometimes is like ha. Like, this is actually fun. Like, they'll, like, turn it around. Sometimes you'll get a little bit more, like, revenge in there. Uh, but that sadistic piece is, like, huge with that. Now, a lot of times when we bring in antisocial, you're going to have someone with a lot of impulse, uh, lack of impulse control, uh, and also engaging in, like, high-risk behaviors. So there's a lot of different pieces, and it gets combined with different aspects. So overt and also antisocial kind of get combined produces this really toxic environment, like even more so than the, some of the others, because at this point, the person oftentimes knows who they are, knows what they're doing, but they're more intentional. They're more intentional in trying to figure out how to hurt you. They're more intentional of in getting revenge. They're more intentional at in making you feel crazy. There's many different aspects to it. So we talk about this aspect of malignance combining these two. Think, think of it this way. It, uh, in the workplace, it could be a boss that's like micromanaging and belittling you at the same time like controlling you, like I'm going to do this, and I'm also going to have fun with making fun of you, with putting you down, with making you feel bad, things like that, okay? Maybe you're in the point where you're like, I don't know if I'm dealing with a narcissist, if I'm the narcissist, like he's been calling me the narcissist, but I feel I like I'm walking on eggshells. Like there's so many different things like that that people struggle with. They go to escapetoxicity.com. It's one way for you to be able to start your healing journey and learn about narcissism and learn about what it actually looks like. It's a seven-day challenge for $7 to work on um, going through the process of seeing who it is, what's going on, the guilt, the reactive abuse, how you've shown up in the relationship, and how you can get free, not just from that person physically, but from the mindset. That's how we start people down the journey of breaking free and getting moving, moving forward in their healing. If you want to talk to me in more of an accelerated environment, working one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to rawmotivations.com to help you overcome the toxic relationships and to be able to find healing in your life.